2021 was certainly a, well, let's say interesting year, and it's looking as though 2022 will continue the trend. I am the TAG Director of Communications, Lisa Lupo, and today I'm welcoming our founder and CEO, Dr. David Acheson, for the latest in our series of TAG Talks, Food Safety and Public Health videos. Welcome, David. Lisa, thank you. Pleasure to be with you again. Yes. So David, what would you see as having been the most interesting aspects of 2021 for the food and beverage industry from farm to retail? Wow. Well, as you've said, 2021 has been, it, it's been a challenging year, I think, for everybody in the food industry. And it really, most of it stems back to still the impacts of, of COVID. And fundamentally, what that's done to the food industry, and it doesn't matter where you are on it, whether you're growing, manufacturing, or selling at retail, or trying to operate a restaurant, it's been all about labor. Um, labor shortages, difficulty finding employees, um, quite a number of the clients that we've worked with have had 30, 40% of their workforce in a manufacturing environment as temporary employees. So the challenges around all of that is, is probably what's driven a lot of the concerns and risk in the, in the food industry. Putting, us, putting aside the um, other factors, I mean, just not just the availability of labor, the cost of labor, the challenges around the supply chain, um, having shorts on the supply chain, having to pivot, having to find different suppliers, um, just every, every, every kind of curveball that you can imagine just being thrown at the food industry to try to navigate that. That continues to be, to be a huge challenge. Layered on top of that, we've got the, what, what have the regulators been doing? What, what's been happening from the regulatory side of it? Well, I suppose a little bit of a silver lining is at least during 2021, we didn't get any massive new rules or regulations that we had to right. immediately comply with. May not be true for 2022, but this year where we haven't had to deal with that. But what we, what we have got is, is very evident regulatory oversight and scrutiny. Um, FSIS certainly has not relaxed on the meat and poultry side. FDA has not only not relaxed, um, I think some of the experiences that we've had at TAG is they are expecting food industries to move very swiftly when there's a problem. Um, very, very little slack for We've got a situation. What are you going to do about it? Let's figure out a strategy. It's like we've got a situation. We think your product is implicated. We've got a press release that's going out tonight warning the public about your product. What are you going to do about it? And okay. um, it's it's moving very quickly. And um, so a key part of that is just sort of recognizing the need the need to be prepared and ready for those things. None of them. None of us wants to deal with that. Um, and we've talked before about some of the molecular technologies, whole genome sequencing, which continues to be a highly leveraged tool by regulatory agencies. And every year that database gets larger and larger mm -hmm. and stronger. So, you know, again, increasing the likelihood that something to do with your products, your facility will track back to something in the whole genome database and sort of set the regulators on a track to come and come, come visit you. So um, it's it certainly has been a, a highly highly challenging year for, for the food industry um, on all on all fronts. And kudos for the industry for continuing to do such a great job, frankly, um, because it's not been an easy year. So with all that, um, were there other areas that tended to be kind of key areas of focus or concern for tag clients? Yeah, I mean, I think as we look at <clears throat> aside from all those challenges, it's sort of. It, it, it's played into um, some of the, particularly on the FDA side and the oversight of the Food Safety Modernization Act. Um, companies are, are the inspectors are, spend, are spending more time looking at food safety plans, asking questions about why don't you have this as a risk? Because um, as everybody knows, the FDA has published an appendix um, to, to, to the preventive control rule that lays out what they think you should think about. Right. And, and many inspectors are going on into facilities with the assumption that that is a risk and why don't you have a preventive control? 
And we've had a number of companies that have been caught flat footed in terms of having to explain to the FDA why they don't think it, it's needed. Now it's a bit of a detail, Lisa, but, but um, the agency has definitely shifted its focus to food safety plans. Is your hazard analysis around those robust, solid and current? Have you thought about all these risks? Um, and are those, are those preventive controls that you've put in place properly validated and, and are they working? Um, we've certainly seen areas of focus um, in, in certain quarters. The shrimp industry seems to have gone under the spotlight mm -hmm. for some reason. Um, and and, and that's, that's been an area of, of particular focus as are some aspects of the spice industry. So, uh, but, but broadly, it, it's the FDA is, is, seems to be focusing much more than they were on, on truly looking at in the details and the depths of your food safety plan um, okay. and, and checking that out and giving people 483s when they don't have them right. Okay. So if we look forward to 2022, what do you see as coming for the industry and its regulations? Um, Okay, 2022, I think as we go into 2022, and we're having this conversation right at the end of 2021, um, I mentioned COVID, I have mentioned the impact of that. We are definitely not out of the woods on that one. And I think the biggest impact in the first quarter, so Q1 of 2022, the industry is gonna be hit hard with potentially with absenteeism, with more temps, with more challenges, with more supply chain disruption. If the current variant that's sweeping the US Omicron really takes off and, and we get that level of cases and um, hopefully not severe illnesses, but we should be planning in Q1 to be even more strapped with, with labor and having to navigate around that. I just, I just think it's wise, prudent so, so to do that. Um, beyond that, looking, looking at the regulatory front, I don't see FDA slowing down at all on, on leveraging molecular epidemiology, whole genome sequencing. I think that will continue at a, a pace. I think they'll continue to look at Food Safety Modernization Act compliance. I should have mentioned actually that um, compliance with the Foreign Supplier Verification Program has also been a really hot topic in 2021. I don't see that changing. Um, you know, FDA love pulling on loose threads and when they find them in the industry, they keep tugging on those loose threads and that's definitely one of them. So if you're listening to me right now and you, you're, you're under FSVP and you don't have that all stitched up, then, then take a good look because they may be come knocking at your door. Um, probably the, 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 the regulatory horizon, there's a couple of things. Um, we've got on the meat, meat and poultry side, particularly poultry, we've got the Food Safety Inspection Service really looking hard at salmonella. Okay. Um, the, the, uh, the leaders in FSIS have made a commitment to reduce salmonella levels, which even though prior administrations have made the same commitment, um, they've been unsuccessful at, at shifting salmonella prevalence hardly at all in the US. It remains about the same today as it was 20 years ago. Um, unlike Listeria E. coli O157, which had come down nicely, the, the salmonella has stubbornly refused to drop. So it's becoming a regulatory focus for, for, for on, on the meat and poultry side. And um, so likely for poultry producers, this is gonna be, um, this is gonna be an area of, of huge focus. Um, let's see where the regulators go in terms of anything from declaring specific serotypes to be adulterants or looking for enumeration or focusing more on the life side. If we flip over to FDA, from a regulatory perspective, the one train I see coming is something on traceability. Okay. Um, we've seen the FDA talk about smarter era of food safety, of which traceability is a key part, as is e-commerce, um, as is food safety culture, um, all of which is sort of playing into, particularly the traceability, new regulatory requirements. We've got a draft rule out there. It's been there for comment. And I think in 2022, we'll see that finalized. Um, and, and broadly, Lisa, in 2022, I think as, as companies are navigating all of these uh, labor shortages and shifts um, and regulatory focus, more and more entities is, are looking at their food safety culture. And um, 
really looking at are the employees seeing food safety as our problem collectively our problem as opposed to individuals and groups saying no that's not my problem that's somebody else's problem to deal with that fraying conveyor belt or you know a bunch of broken pallets let somebody else deal with that um sort of the fundamentals of understanding food safety culture um becomes even more important when you get these outside pressures we've been talking about during 2021 and going into 2022. So I, I think we're gonna, the, the storm, the, the storms are gonna continue. The headwinds are gonna be there. It's been pretty bad. The, the food industry have navigated it extremely well, but um, I, I don't see things slowing down or abating anytime soon. So, Let's keep doing what we're doing and obviously look forward to tag working with, uh, with all our clients to, to help them manage all these, uh, these headwinds and challenges. Okay. Thank you so much, David. But you know, before we close, so with all that you've discussed here, quite a few things between 2021 and 2022, would you have any final kind of brief words of wisdom for the coming year? I, I think the, the, the key things are it focuses on be prepared. Okay. Um, it, it's truly, to the extent that you have the time and the resources, look at the programs that you've got around controlling supply chain risk and whether or not you're, you're compliant today with the Food Safety Modernization Act, particularly if you're, if you're on, the FDA, on the FDA side of the world. Um, FISMA has been around a while. We put our food safety programs in place 2016, 17. We're at that reanalysis point, three years out, assuming nothing's changed. And um, if you haven't had a good look at whether you're still current and whether you're still managing the risks properly and all your records are good, I'd recommend you do that because I think that that will be increased area of focus. All right. Thank you again, David, and thank you to our viewers. And we hope that 2021 was and that 2022 is a good year for all of you. So for more on key topics of the past year, check out TAG's full line of TAG Talks videos on YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube channel or our weekly newsletter to be sure you don't miss anything in 2022. Thank you. <laughs>